What tryst is this the cockerel goes to keep with such haste that he must leave his tail behind? A tryst where the cockerel needs no adornment. Oh, uh, you hear that, my companions? Okay. That's the way the world goes. Because the man approaches a brand new bride, uh, he forgets the long faithful mother uh, of his children. Uh, when the horse sniffs the stable, does he not strain at the bridle? Mm. The market is the long suffering home of my spirit and the women are packing up to go. Hey, that issue harassed they slipped into the stew pot while we feasted. Ah. We ate it up with the rest of the meat. Mm. I have neglected my women. We know all that. Still, it's no reason for shedding your tail on this day of all days. Really? I know the women will cover you with damask yeah. and alari, yeah. but when the wind blows cold from behind, hey, that's when the fowl knows his true friends. Oh, no, yo. Bravo! Are you sure there'll be one like me on the other side? Olonio. Abao. Ah, <laughs> far be it for me to belittle the dwellers of that place, but a man is either born to his art or he isn't. And I don't know for certain that you'll meet my father. So who is going to sing these deeds in accents that will pierce the deafness of the ancient ones? Ha, I have prepared my going home. Just tell me, Olonio. I need you on this journey, yes. and I shall be behind you. <laughs> you are like a jealous wife. Jealous. Stay close to me, but only on this side. Mm. My fame, my honor, our legacies to the living. Stay behind and let the world sip its honey from your lips. Your name will be like the sweet berry a child places under his tongue to sweeten the passage of food. Benny. The world will never spit it out. Benny. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This market is my roost. When I come among the women, I am a chicken with a hundred mothers. <laughs> I become a monarch whose palace is built with tenderness and beauty. They love to spoil you, but oh. beware. Well, the hands of women also weaken the unwary. Uh, this night I lay my head upon their lap and go to sleep. Mm. Uh -huh. This night, I'll touch feet with their feet in a dance that is no longer of this earth. About? But the smell of their flesh, uh -huh. their sweat, uh -huh. the smell of indigo on their cloth. Uh -huh. This is the last air I wish to breathe as I go to meet my great forebears. In their time, the world was never tilted from its groove. Hey. It shall not be in yours. Hey. The gods have said no. Uh -huh. In their time, the great wars came and went. Oh. The little wars came and went. <laughs> the white slavers came and went. Oh. They took away the heart of our race. Oh. They bore away the mind and muscle of our race. Hey. The city fell oh. and was rebuilt. Hey. The city fell and our people trod hey. in mountain and forest to found a new home. Hey. Elessioba, can you hear me? I hear your voice along with your. Mm. Our world was never wrenched from its true cause. The gods have said no. No. There is only one home to the life of a river mussel. Mm -hmm. There's only one home to the life of a tortoise. Mm -hmm. There's only one shell to the soul of man. And there is only one world to the spirit of our race. If that world leaves its course and smashes on boulders of the great void, whose world will give us shelter? It did not in the time of my forebears. Mm. It shall not in mine. <laughs> the cockerel must not be seen without his feather. <laughs> Nor will the not eye bird be much longer without his nest. Oh, not the not eye bird, Eleshi. I've said, the not I bird. Ah. All respect to our elders, but is there really such a bird? What? Could it be that he failed to knock on your door? Ah, 
Elishin's riddles are not merely the nut in the kernel that breaks human teeth. Oh. He also buries the kernel in hot ember yeah. and dares a man's fingers to draw it out. Yeah. I'm sure he called on you, alone. Oh, oh. Did you hide in the loft and push out the servant to tell him you are out? Barabasalu! Owela Ofiwa! Barabasalu! Owela Ofiwa! Came calling. <clears throat> Who does not know his rasp of reeds? Oh, a twilight whisper in the leaves before the great Araba falls? Mm. Did you hear it? No, not I, swears the farmer. Oh, he snaps his fingers round his head, not I. abandons a hard worn harvest, okay. and begins a rapid dialogue with his legs. <laughs> Shouts the fearless hunter. Not a... But it's getting dark, and this night lamp has leaked out all its oil. Ah. I think it's best to go home and resume my hunt another day. It is best. But now he pauses, suddenly lets out a wail. Oh, foolish mouth, calling down a curse on your own head. Your lamp has leaked out all its oil, has it? Forwards or backwards now? He dare not move. What will he do? To search for leaves and make a tutu on that spot? Mm -hmm. Or race home to the safety of his half? Oh, hey. oh, Ten oh, market days have passed, my friend. Ten. And still he's rooted there, rigid as the plinth of Royal. <laughs> the mouth of the courtesan. <laughs> barely open wide enough to take a happy rubber when she wailed. <laughs> All dressed she was to call upon my friend, the chief tax officer. Hey. But now she sends her go-between instead. Tell him I'm ill. My period has come suddenly. But not, I hope, my time. Why is the pupil crying? Why, Baba? His hapless head was made to taste the knuckles of my friend the Malam. <laughs> if you were then reciting the Quran, would you have ears for idle noises darkening the trees? You child of the Lord! <laughs> he shuts down school before it's time, oh. runs home, and rings himself with amulets. Oh, you should be praying. And take my good kinsman if I will me. His hands were like a covers, strong and true. Hey. I saw them tremble like wet wings of a fowl. One day he cast his time smooth okwele across the divination board. Oh. And all because the suppliant looked him in the eye and asked, Did you hear that whisper in the leaves? No! Was his reply. Oh, perhaps I am growing deaf. Good day. And Ifa spoke no more that day. The priest locked fast his doors. Bam. Sealed up his leaking roof. Finish. But wait. Uh -huh. This sudden care was not for Fawo, me, but for Asunyi. Kuya bed of Ifa's heart of wisdom. Asunyi Hey, I did not know a kite was hovering in the sky. And Ifa, now a twittering chicken in the brood of Fawo, me, the mother hen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but. I must not forget my evening courier from the abundant palm, oh, whose groan became not I, <laughs> as he constipated down a wayside bush. Oh, he wonders if Elegbara has tricked his buttocks to discharge against a sacred grove. Oh. Hear him mutter spells to ward off penalties for an abomination he did not intend. Oh. If any here stumbles on a gourd of wine fermenting near the road, uh -huh. and nearby hears a stream of spells issuing from a crouching form, brother to a shigadi, <laughs> bring home my wine. Uh -huh. Tell my tapper I have ejected fear from home and farm. Uh -huh. Assure him all is well. <laughs> So 
Antonio Sofoco! Ora to Sofati o Fegiano! of farmstead and home. Really? The peace of road and hair. Really? We do not doubt the peace of the forest. Oh, there was fear in the forest too. How? Not I was lately heard even in the lair of beasts. Oh. Hey, the hyena cackled loud. See <laughs> <laughs> it twitched its fiery tail and glared. <laughs> Not I! <laughs> Not I became the answering name of the restless bird. Oh. That little one whom death found nesting in the leaves when whisper of his coming ran before him on the wind. Oh. Not I has long abandoned home. Mm. This same dawn, I heard him twitter in the gods' abode. Oh. Ah! Companions of this living world. What a thing this is that even those we call immortal should fear to die. Multitudes? I, mm. when that not I bird perched upon my roof, <laughs> bade him seek his nest again, oh. safe without care or fear. <laughs> no fear. I unrolled my welcome mat for him to see. Uh -huh. Not I flew happily away. <laughs> You'll hear his voice no more in this lifetime. <laughs> you all know what I am. <laughs> turns its open loads into the path of lightning. A gay thoroughbred whose stride disdains to falter, though an adder reared suddenly in his path. My reign is losing. I am master of my fate. When the hour comes, watch me dance along the narrowing path glazed by the souls of my great precursors. My soul is eager. I shall not turn aside. You will not delay. Where the storm pleases and when it directs the giants of the forest. When friendship summons is when the true comrade goes. Nothing will hold you back. Nothing. What? Has no one told you yet? Tell us, Baba. I go to seek my friend and master company. <laughs> Who says the mouth does not believe in? No, I have chewed all that before. I say I have. The world is not a constant honeypot. Where I found little, I make do with little. Where there was plenty, <laughs> I gorge myself. My master's hands and mine have always deep together. And home or sacred feast, the bowl was beaten bronze. The meats so succulent, our teeth accuse us of neglect. We shared the choices of the season's harvest of yams. How my friend would read desire in my eyes before I knew the cause. However rare, however precious, it was mine. The town, the very land was yours. The world was mine. 
our joint hands raised house post of trust that withstood the siege of envy and the termites of time. But the twilight hour brings bats and rodents. Shall I yield them cause to foul the rafters? Bless your God. Are you not that man who looked out of doors that stormy day the god of luck limped by, mm. drenched to the very life that held his rags together? Ah. You took pity upon his sores and wished him fortune. Hey, fortune was put loose this dawn, he replied, <laughs> till you trapped him in a heartfelt wish that now returns to you. Ah. I say you are that man who chanced upon the calabash of honor. You thought it was palm wine and drained its contents to the final drop. Life has an end. A life that will outlive fame and friendship begs another name. What elder takes his tongue to his plate, licks it clean of every crumb, he will encounter silence when he calls on children to fulfill the smallest errand. Life is honor. It ends when honor ends. Enough of that sound, I say. Let me hear no more on that thing. I have heard enough. We must have said something wrong. Elashiyamba, we ask forgiveness before you speak. I am bitterly offended. Our unworthiness has betrayed us. All we can do is ask your forgiveness. Correct us like a kind father. This day of all days. Oh, it does not bear thinking. If we offend you now, we have mortified the gods. We offend heaven itself. Father of us all. Tell us where we went astray, huh? Pedro, Papa. Are you not ashamed? Even a tear-veiled eye preserves its function of sight. Because my mind was raised to horizons, even the boldest man lowers his gaze in thinking of, must my body here be taken for a vagrant? Uh-uh. Husband of the king, I am more baffled than ever. The strictest father unbends his brow when the child is penitent, unless she... When time is short, we do not spend it prolonging the riddle. Their shoulders are bowed with the weight of fear, lest they have marred your day beyond repair. Speak now in plain words, and let us pursue the ailment to the home of remedies. Ah. Words are cheap. We know you for a man of honor. Well, tell me, is this how a man of honor should be seen? Huh? Are these not the same clothes in which I came among you a full half hour ago? The gods are kind. A fault soon remedied is soon forgiven. Uh -huh. even as we match our words with deed, let your heart forgive us completely. You who are breath and giver of my being, how should I dare refuse you forgiveness, even if the offense were real? He forgives us. He forgives, he forgives, he forgives us. Forgives. What a fearful thing it is when the voyager sets forth, but a curse remains behind. Hey. For a while. We truly feared our hands had wrenched the world adrift in emptiness. Richly, richly, robe him richly. The cloth of honor is a lari. Sonia is the band of friendship. Bow skin makes slippers of a steam. For a while, 
We truly feared our hands had wrenched the world adrift in emptiness. He who must, must voyage forth. The world will not roll backwards. It is he who must with one great gesture overtake the war. For a while, we truly feared our hands had wrenched the world in emptiness. The God you bear is not for shirking. That God is not for setting down at the first crossroads or wayside grove. Only one river may know its contents. We shall all meet at the great market. We shall all meet at the great market. He who goes early takes the best bargains. But we shall meet and resume our banter. Do, do, Elashi Abajo, Iwala Bero, do, do, Elashi Abajo, Iwala Bero, do, do, Elashi Abajo, Iwala Bero, do, do, Elashi Abajo. Good. We know you will leave it so. The world I know is the bounty of hives after bees have swarmed. No goodness teems with such open hands, even in the dreams of deities. And we know you will leave it so. I was born to keep it so. Mm. A hive is never known to wander. Mm -hmm. An ant hill does not desert its roots. Mm. We cannot see the still great womb of the world. No man beholds his mother's womb, yet who denies it's there? Coiled to the navel of the world is that endless cord that links us all to the great origin. If I lose my way, the trailing cord will bring me to the roots. The world is in your hands. I embrace it. And let me tell you women, I like this farewell that the world designed. <laughs> Unless my eyes deceive me, Unless we are already parted, the world and I, and all that breeds desire is lodged among our tireless ancestors. But tell me, friends, am I still eth in that beloved market of my youth? Or, or could it be my will has outleapt the conscious act, and I have come among the great departed? Ah, oh, Oh. why do your eyes roll like a bush rat who sees his fate like his father's spirit mirrored in the eyes of a snake? Hmm. And all these questions. You are standing on the same earth you've always stood upon. This voice you hear is mine, Olowio, not that of an acolyte in heaven. How can that be? In all my life as horseman of the king, the juiciest fruit on every tree was mine. Mm. I saw, I touched, I wooed. Rarely was the answer no. Mm. The honor of my place, the veneration I received in the eye of man or woman prospered my suit and played havoc with my sleeping hour. <laughs> and they tell me my eyes were a hawk in perpetual hunger. Split an Iroko tree in two. Hide a woman's beauty in its heartwood and seal it up again. Eleshi, journeying by, would make his camp beside that tree of all the shades in the forest. Mm. Who would deny your reputation? Yeah. Snake on the loose in dark passages of the market. <laughs> Dead bog, who wages war on the mat and receives the thanks of the vanquished. Oh. When caught with his bride's own sister, sister. he protested. Ah, but I was only prostrating myself to her as becomes a graceful in law. Hunter! <laughs> Who carries his powder horn on the hips and fires, crouching or standing? Hey. Hey. Warrior, who never makes that excuse of the whining coward? Ah, but how can I go to battle without my trousers? <laughs> Trouserless or shirtless, it's all one to him. Hey. Or careering from a camouflage of leaves before he strikes. Hey! The victim is already proud! <laughs> Once they told him how a stallion does not feed on the grass beneath him. Mm -hmm. He replied, true, but surely he can roll on it. <laughs> ah, but listen yet. You know, there is the leaf nibbling grub. Mm -hmm. 
and there's the cola chewing beetle. The leaf nibbling grub lives on the the leaf, and the cola chewing beetle lives inside the cola house. Don't we know what our man feeds on when we find him cocooned inside a woman's wrapper? <laughs> <laughs> you all have cause to know me well. Yes. But if you say this earth is still the same as gave birth to those songs, mm. tell me, who was that goddess through whose lips I saw the ivory pebbles of Oya's riverbed? Yaloja, who is she? I saw her enter your store. All your daughters I know well. No. Not even Ogun of the farm toiling dawn till dusk on his tuba patch. Not even Ogun with the finest hoe he ever forged at the anvil could have shaped that rise of buttocks. No! Not though he had the richest earth between his fingers. Her wrapper was no disguise for thighs whose ripples shame the river's coils around the hills of Alessi. Her eyes were new laid eggs glowing in the dark. Her skin. Alessi, Oba. What? Where do you all say I am? Still among the living. Mm -hmm. And that radiance which so suddenly lit up this market I could boast I knew so well? Has one step already in her husband's home. She is betrothed. Why do you tell me that? Not because we dare give you offense, Eleshi. Today is your day and the whole world is yours. Still. Even those who leave town to make a new dwelling elsewhere like to be remembered by what they leave behind. Who does not seek to be remembered? Memory is master of death, the chink in his armor of conceit. I shall leave that which makes my going the sheerest dream of an afternoon. Should voyagers not travel light? Let the considerate traveler shed of his excessive load all that may benefit the living. Yes, we knew you for a man of honor. Then honor me. I deserve a bed of honor to lie upon. The best is yours. We know you for a man of honor. You are not one who eats and leaves nothing on his plate for children. Did you not say it yourself? Huh? Not one who blights the happiness of others for a moment's pleasure. Who speaks of pleasure? Oh, women, listen. Pleasure pours. Our acts should have meaning. The sap of the plantain never dries. You have seen the young shoot swelling even as the parent stock begins to wither. Women, let my going be likened to the twilight hour of the plantain. What does he mean, Yaloja? This language is the language of our elders. We do not fully grasp it. I dare not understand you yet, Alessi. Eh. All you who stand before the spirit that dares the opening of the last door of passage, dare to rid my going of regrets. My wish transcends the blotting out of thought in one mere moment's tremor of the senses. Do me credit and do me honor. I am girded for the route beyond burdens of waste and longing. Then let me travel light. Let seed that will not serve the stomach on the way remain behind. Let it take root in the earth of my choice. In this earth, I leave behind. The voice I hear is already touched by the waiting fingers of our departed. I dare not refuse. But the the matter is no longer in our hands. But she is betrothed to your own son. Tell him. My son's wish is mine. I did the asking for him. The loss can be remedied. But who will remedy the blight of closed hands on a day when all should be openness and light? Tell him, you say. You wish that I burden him with knowledge that will sour his wish and lay regrets on the last moments of his mind. You pray to him who is your intercessor to the other world. Don't set this world adrift in your own time. Would you rather it was my hand whose sacrilege wrenched it loose? Not many men will brave the cause. Of a dispossessed husband. Only the causes of the departed are to be feared. The claims of one whose foot is on the threshold of their abode surpasses even the claims of blood. It is impiety even to place hindrances in their ways. What do my mother say? 
Shall I step bottom into the unknown? Not we, but the very earth says no. The sap in the plantain does not dry. Let grain that will not feed the voyager at his passage drop here and take root as he steps beyond this earth and us. Oh, you who fill the home from half to threshold with the voices of children. You who now bestride the hidden gulf and pause to draw the right foot across and into the resting home of the great forebears. It is good that your loins be drained into the earth we know. Let your last strength be plowed back into the womb that gave you being. Iyaloja, mother of multitudes in the teeming market of the world, how your wisdom transfigures you. Hmm. Eleshi, hmm. even at the narrow end of the passage, I know you will look back and sigh a last regret for the flesh that flashed past your spirit in flight. You always had a restless eye. Your choice has my blessing. Take the good news to our daughter and make her ready. Your eyes were clouded at first. Not for long. It is those who stand at the gateway of the great change to whose cry we must pay heed. And then think of this. It makes the mind tremble. The fruit of such a union is rare. It will be neither of this world, nor of the next, nor of the one behind us. As if the timelessness of the ancestor world and the unborn have joined spirits to ring the issue of the elusive being of passage. Hey. Elashi. I'm here. What is it? Did you hear all I said just now? Yes. Mm. The living must eat and drink. When the moment comes, don't turn the food to rodent droppings in their mouth. Don't let them taste the ashes of the world when they step out at dawn to breathe the morning dew. This doubt is unworthy of you, Ieloja. Uh, eating the Awusa nut is not so difficult as drinking water afterwards. The waters of the bitter stream are honey to a man whose tongue has savored all. No one knows when the ants desert their home. They leave the mound intact. The swallow is never seen to peck holes in its nest when it is time to move with the season. There are always thrones of humanity behind the leave taker. The rains should not come through the roof for them. The winds must not blow through the walls at night. I refuse to take offense. Hey. You wish to travel light. Well, the earth is yours. But be sure the seed you leave in it attracts no cause. You really mistake my person, Yoloja. I said nothing. Nah. You must go prepare your bridal chamber, then these same hands will lay your shrouds. Must you be so blunt? Well, weave your shrouds, but let the fingers of my bride seal my eyelids with earth and wash my body. Prepare yourself. Unless you. Mama Baila, Polo, Tiro,
anyone out there? I'll turn off the gramophone. I'm sure I heard something fall over. Oh, it's you, Amusa. What? Why didn't you just knock instead of knocking things over? Uh, Mr. Piddinkin! Uh, Mr. Piddinkin! What is the matter with you? Who is it, dear? Oh! Oh, a moussa! Yes, it's a moussa and acting most strangely. Madame, you too? What the hell is the matter with you, man? Your costume, darling. Our fancy dress. Oh, hell, I'd forgotten all about that. I think you've shocked his big pagan heart, bless Oh, him. nonsense. He's a Muslim. Come on, a moussa! <laughs> You don't believe in all this nonsense, do you? I thought you were a good Muslim. Uh, Mr. Pirinkin, I beg you, sir. What do you think you do with that dress? Uh, it belonged to dead cult, not for human being. Oh, Musa, what a letdown you are. I swear by you at the club, you know, thank God for a Musa. He doesn't believe in any mumbo-jumbo. And now look at you. Mr. Pirinkin, I beg you, take it off. He's not good for man like you to touch that cloth. Well, I've got it on. And then what's more, Jane and I have bet on it. We're taking first prize at the ball. Now, if you can just pull yourself together and tell me what you wanted to see me about. Sir, I cannot talk this matter to you in that dress. I know fit. Uh, what's that rubbish again? He's dead earnest, too, Simon. I, I think you'll have to handle this matter delicately. Delicately? Now, look here. Amusa. I think this little joke has gone far enough, hmm? Now, you seem to forget that you are a police officer in His Majesty's service. I order you to report your business at once or face disciplinary action. Sir, it is a matter of death. How can man talk against death to person in uniform of death? It's like talking against government to person in uniform of police. Please, sir, I go and come back. Now! Oh, uh, Musa, what is there to be scared of in the costume? You saw it confiscated last month from those um, Agoon Goon men who were creating trouble in town. You helped arrest the cult leader yourself. If the juju couldn't harm you at that time, how can it possibly harm you now? And merely by looking at it... Madame, I arrest the ringleaders who make trouble. But me? I no touch Agoon Goon. That Agoon Goon itself, I no touch. And I no abuse them. Mm -mm. I, I arrest ringleader. But I treat Egungu with respect. I mean, it's hopeless. We'll merely end up missing the best part of the ball. When they get this way, there's nothing you can do. It's simply hammering against a brick wall. It, uh, write your report, whatever it is, on that pad, Musa, and take yourself out of here. Come on, Jane. We, we only upset his delicate sensibilities by remaining here. Jane! Coming, darling. Nearly ready. Uh, never mind being ready. Just listen to this. What is it? A moose's report. Listen, uh, I have to report that it come to my information that one prominent chief, namely the Ellison Oba, is to commit death tonight as a result of native custom. Because this is criminal offense, I await further instruction at charge office, Sergeant Amusa. Did I hear you say commit death? Well, obviously, he means murder. You mean a ritual murder? It must be. You know, you, you think you've stamped it all out. It's always lurking under the surface somewhere. No. Oh. Does it mean we are not getting to the ball at all? No, 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 no. I have the man arrested, everyone remotely involved. In, in any case, there may be nothing to it, just rumors. Really? I thought you found Amusa's rumors generally reliable. Well, that's true enough, but who knows what may have been giving him the scare lately. But look at his conduct tonight. You have to admit, he had his own peculiar logic. <laughs> How can man talk against death to person in uniform of death? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, you can't get to the police station dressed like oh, that. Oh, no, I'll send Joseph with instructions. Damn it, what a confounded nuisance. But don't you think you should talk first to the man, Simon? Do you want to go to the ball or not? Darling, why are you getting rattled? He's only trying to be intelligent. Seems hardly fair just to lock up a man and a chieftain at that on the, um, 
Oh, what's that legal word again? Uh, uncorroborated word of a sergeant? Yeah, well, that's easily decided. Joseph! Yes, master? Yes, you're quite right, of course. I, I'm, I'm getting rattled. It's probably the effect of those bloody drums. Did you hear how they go on and on? I wondered when you'd notice. Uh, do you suppose it has something to do with this affair? Oh, who knows? They always find an excuse for making noise. Even so. Yes, Simon? It's different, Jane. I, I, I don't think I've heard this particular sound before. There's something unsettling about it. I thought all bush drumming sounded the same. <laughs> don't tease me now, Jane. This may be serious. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll come in, Joseph. I, I don't know where you pick up all these elephantine notions of tact. Come over here. Sir. Joseph, are you a Christian or not? Hey, yes, sir. Does seeing me in this outfit bother you? Ah. Hey, no, sir. It has no power. <laughs> well, thank God for some sanity at last. Now, Joseph, <laughs> answer me on the honor of a Christian. What is supposed to be going on in town tonight? Tonight, sir? You mean that chief who is going to kill himself? What? What do you mean, kill himself? Well, no, you, you do mean he's going to kill somebody, don't you? No, master. He will not kill anybody, huh? And no one will kill him. He will simply <laughs> die. But why, Joseph? Uh -uh. It is native law and custom. Hmm? Uh. The king died last month, huh? and tonight is his burial. But before they can bury him, the Elishim must die so as to accompany him to heaven. I seem to be fated to clash more often with that man than with any of the other chiefs. He is the king's chief's horseman. I know. Uh -huh. well, Simon, what's the matter? It would have to be him. Who is he? Oh, don't you remember? He's that chief with whom I had a scrap some three or four years ago. I, I, I helped his son get into a medical school in England, remember? He fought tooth and nail to prevent it. Oh, now I remember. He was that rather sensitive young man. What was his name again? Olunde. Yes, I, I haven't replied to his last letter, come to think of it. <laughs> the old pagan wanted him to stay and carry on some family tradition or the other. Honestly, I couldn't understand the fuss he made. I literally had to help the boy escape from close confinement and load him onto the next boat. A, a most intelligent boy, really bright. I rather thought he was much too sensitive, you know. The sort of person you feel ought to be a poet, munching rose petals in Bloomsbury. <laughs> well, he's going to make a first-class doctor. His mind is set on that, and as long as he wants my help, he's welcome to it. Simon? Yes? This boy, he was his eldest son, wasn't he? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, who could tell with that old ram? <laughs> Do you know Joseph? Oh, yes, madame. Huh? He was the eldest son. That's why Elation cursed master good and proper. <laughs> The eldest son is not supposed to travel away from the land. Is that really true, Simon? Did he really curse you good and proper? Yes, yes. By all accounts, I should be dead by now. Hey, no, master. Huh? Master is white man and good Christian. Huh? Black man juju can't touch master. If he was his eldest, he would be the eldest to the next king, wouldn't he? I mean... It's a family thing, isn't it, Joseph? Yes, madame. And if this election had died before the king, eh, his eldest son must take his place. That would explain why the old chieftain was so mad that you took his boy away. Well, it makes me all the more happy I did. I wonder if he knew. Who? Oh, 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 you mean Olunde? Yes. Is that why he was so determined to get away? I wouldn't stay if I knew I was trapped in such a horrible custom. Oh, no, I don't think he knew. Well, at least he gave no indication of it, but... You couldn't really tell with him. He, he was rather close, you know, quite unlike most of them. He didn't give much away, not even to me. Aren't they all rather close, Simon? These natives here? Good, good gracious, no. They'll open their mouths and yap with you about their family secrets before you can stop them. Only the other day... But do they really I... give anything away? I mean, anything that really counts? This affair, for instance, we didn't know they still practiced this custom, did we? Yes, I suppose you're right. Sly, devious bastards. Hey, master. Can I go now, master? I have to clean the kitchen. What? Mm. Oh, 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 yes, you, you can go. I forgot you were still here. Simon, you really must watch your language. You know, bastard isn't a simple swear word in these parts. <laughs> Just when did you become a, a social anthropologist? That's what I'd like to know. I'm not claiming to know anything. I just happen to have overheard the servants quarreling. That's how I know. They consider it a smear. Well, I thought the extended family system took care of all that. Elastic family, no bastards. <laughs> Have it your own way. Oh, you... <laughs> Simon.
Simon, that drumming, do you really think it might be connected with this ritual? It's been going on all evening. Yes, well, let's ask our native guide, Joseph! Oh, no, 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 just a minute, Joseph. What's the drumming about? I don't know, master. What do you mean you don't know? It's only two years since your conversion. Don't, don't, don't tell me all that holy water nonsense also wiped out your tribal memory. Master. <laughs> now you've done it. What? What have I done now? Oh, never mind. Listen, Joseph, just tell me, is that drumming connected with dying or anything of that nature? Madame, hmm? this is what I'm trying to say. I'm not sure. It sounds like the death of a great chief. And then it sounds like the wedding of a great chief. It really makes me up. Get back to the kitchen, a fat lot of help you are. Yes, master. Simon. All right, all right, I'm in no mood for preaching. It's not my preaching you need to worry about. It's the preaching of the missionaries who preceded you here. When they make converts, they really convert them. Calling holy water nonsense to our Joseph is really like insulting the Virgin Mary in front of a Roman Catholic. <laughs> He's going to hand in his notice tomorrow, you mark my word. <laughs> now you're being ridiculous. Am I? What are you willing to bet tomorrow we're going to be without a steward boy? Well, Did I you more, see his face? I am more concerned about whether or not we will be one native chief short by tomorrow. Christ, listen to those drums. I'll go change and make up some supper. What's that? Simon, it's obvious we have to miss the ball. No nonsense, no. No, it's the first bit of real fun the European club has managed to organize for over a year. I'm damned if I'm going to miss it. And it is a rather special occasion. It, it doesn't happen every day. Simon, you know this business has to be stopped. And you are the only man who can do no, it. No, I, I don't have to stop anything. If they, if they want to throw themselves off the top of a cliff or, or, or poison themselves for the sake of some barbaric custom, what is that to me? Look, if it were, Ritual murder or, or something like that, I'd be duty-bound to do something. I uh, can't keep an eye on all the potential suicides in the province. And as for that man, believe me, it's good riddance. I know you better than that, Simon. You're going to have to do something to stop it. After you've finished blustering. And suppose, after all, it is only a wedding. But I, I, I'd look a proper fool if I interrupted a chief on his honeymoon. Wouldn't I? Who can tell what those chiefs actually do on their honeymoon anyway? Joseph! 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 Did you hear me call you? Why the hell didn't you answer? I didn't hear, master. You didn't hear? How come you are here then? I didn't hear, master. All right, we, we, we'll talk about this in the morning. Listen, I want you to take a note to Sergeant Amusa. You'll find him at the charge office. Get on your bicycle and race there with it. I expect you back in, in 20 minutes, exactly to 20 minutes. Is that clear? Yes, master. Oh, 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 uh, Joseph. Yes, Master? Um, forget what I said just now. The, the, the holy water isn't nonsense. I was talking nonsense. Yes, Master. Have you found him? Who? Joseph. Weren't you shouting for him? Oh, 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 yes. He turned up, finally. Sounded rather desperate. What was it all about? Oh, nothing. I, I, I just wanted to apologize to him. Assure him that the holy water isn't nonsense. Oh, how did he take it? Well, who the hell gives a damn? Look, I, I had a sudden vision of our very Reverend McFarlane drafting another letter of complaint to the resident about my unchristian language towards his parishioners. Mm, I think he's given up on you by now. Don't be too sure. Anyway, I wanted to make sure Joseph didn't lose my note along the way. He looked sufficiently full of the Holy Crusade to do some such thing. If you've finished exaggerating, come and have something to eat. No, 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 put it away. We, we can still get to the ball. Simon! Get your costume back on! There's nothing to worry about. I've instructed a Musa to arrest the man and lock him up. But that station is hardly secure, Simon. He'll soon get his friends to help him escape. Aha. 
That is where I about thought you. I'm not having him put in the station cell. A Musa will bring him right here and lock him up in my study, and he will stay with him throughout the night. No one will dare come here to incite him to anything. <laughs> darling, how clever. <laughs> I'll go get ready. Oh, hey. Yes, darling. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> I was going to keep it until we actually got to the ball. What is it? You know the prince is on a tour of the colonies, don't you? Well, he's docked in the capital only this morning. He's already at the residency. He's going to grace the ball with his presence later tonight. Simon, not really. Yes, he is. He's been invited to give away the prizes, and he has agreed. You must admit, old Angleton is the best club secretary we've ever had. Quick off the mark, that lad. But how thrilling. Yes, the other provincials are going to be damned envious. I wonder what he'll come as. Oh, who knows? That a coat of arms, perhaps, <laughs> and it won't be anything to touch this. Well, that's lucky. If we are to be presented, I won't have to look for a pair of gloves because they're already sewn on. Yes, quite <laughs> right. Trust a woman to think of that. Well, come on, let's get going. Won't be a second. Now I see why you've been so edgy all evening. I thought you weren't handling this affair with your usual brilliance. To begin with, that is. Oh, shut up, woman. Get your things on. All right, boss, coming. <laughs> I am tell you women for last time to come out my road. I am here on official business. Uh, official business? Mm. You white mm. man, you not. Official business is taking place where you want to go. Mm. And it is a business you wouldn't understand. That doesn't fool anyone you know. Mm. It's the one you carry under your government knickers that carry. Hey. What do you mean? <laughs> There's nothing there at all. Uh, there was something. <laughs> you know that handbell which the white man uses to summon his servants? <laughs> I hope you women know, huh? That interfering with officer in execution of his duty oh. is criminal offense. Oh. Interfere? Uh, uh, he says we are interfering with him. <laughs> you foolish man. Foolish. We are telling you all there's nothing hey. there to interfere <laughs> with. I am order you now to clear the road. Uh, eh? What road, uh, eh? The one your father built? Uh, you are a policeman, no so? Mm. Then you know what they call trespassing in court. Uh -huh. Or do you think that kind of road is built for every kind of people? Hey, go back go. and tell the white man who sent you to come and say, If I go, go. go, if I go, go, I will come back with reinforcement. Uh, and we will all return carrying weapons. Oh. Eh? No, I understand. Before they can put on those knickers, hey. the white man fought, cut <laughs> off their weapons. <laughs> what did you? Yeah. I was like, what did you? What did you? You mean you come here to show power to women <laughs> and you don't even have a weapon? <laughs> For the last time, I warn you women to clear the road. Uh, to where? To that hut. Uh, I know he did there. Who? The chief who call himself Eleshinoba. Ah, hey. 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 You ignorant man. Yeah. It is not he who calls himself Eleshinoba. It is his blood that says it. Man. As he called out to his father before him mm. and went to his son after him. And that is in spite of everything your white man can do. Mm. Is it not? The same ocean that washes this land mm. and the white man's land. Hey, so. tell your white man he can hide our son away as long as he likes. <laughs> when the time comes for him, hey, the same ocean will bring him back. The <laughs> government said that kind of thing will stop. Who hey. will stop it? Uh, you? Hey! Tonight, our husband and father will prove himself greater than the laws of strangers. I tell you, <laughs> nobody go prove anything. Tonight or any time uh, is ignorant eh? and criminal <laughs> to prove that kind of ah, ah, hey, 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 hey. Musa, Why do you come here to disturb the happiness of others? M huh? Madam Iyaloja, I'm glad you come. You know me. I no like trouble, oh. huh? Oh. But duty is duty. Yeah. 
I am here to arrest Elashi for criminal intent. <laughs> Tell these women to stop obstructing me in the performance of my duty. And you? What gives you the right to obstruct our leader of man in the performance of his duty? What yes. kind of duty be that one, Yaloja? What, what kind of duty? What kind of duty does a man have to his new bride? <laughs> Yaloja, is it wedding you call this kind of thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have wives, haven't you? Whatever the white man has done to you, he has not stopped you from having wives. Uh -huh. And if he has, at least he is married. Hey. If you don't know what a marriage is, go and ask him to tell you. This go is not to wedding. And ask him at the same time what he would have done if anyone had come to disturb him on his wedding night. Yeah, so, Lord, you I say this not to wedding. Oh, so you want to look inside the bridal chamber? Uh -huh. yeah. uh, you want to see for yourself how a man cuts the virgin off? Hey, madam! Perhaps his wives are still waiting for him to laugh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Lodra, make you tell these women, make them no insult me again. If I hear them, can insult once more. You I... do what? He's out of his mind. It's our mother you are talking to. Do you know that? Not to any illiterate villager. You can bully and terrorize. How dare you intrude here anyway? What's it, Chico? What's it, Petalis? You treated them too gently. Now let them see what it is to tamper with the mothers of this market. Your betters dare not enter the market. When the women say no, <laughs> haven't you learned that yet? Uh. <laughs> you just uh, in khaki and style. Uh, hey. <laughs> no, no, yellow jar. Leave us to deal with him. He no longer knows his mother. We'll teach him. Okay. <laughs> hey. What's next, sir? We have your hey, mother. Uh, do about it? <laughs> Didn't the white man teach you to take off your hat before women? Hey, oh, this is a wedding night. This is a night of joy for uh -huh. us. Not for him. Who asked him here? Does he dare go to the residency without an invitation? Not mm. even while the servants uh. eat the leftovers. Hey? Well, well, it's Mr. Amusa. Amusa. Were you invited? Were you invited? Were you invited? Your invitation card, please. And who are you? Have we been introduced? Oh, okay. Who Sorry, I didn't quite catch your name. Oh, may I take your hat? If you insist, may I take yours? Oh, very kind of you. I... <laughs> Not at all, sir. Oh, won't you sit down? Mm, off to you. Oh, no, I insist. Oh, you are most gracious. <laughs> And how do you find the place? Oh, the natives are all right. Friendly. Tractable. Not a teeny weeny bit restless. Well, a teeny weeny bit restless. One might even say difficult. Oh, yes, indeed. One oh. might be tempted to say difficult. But you do manage to cope. Oh, yes, indeed, I do. I have a rather faithful ox called Amu. Oh, sir. Oh, he's loyal. Oh, absolutely. Lay down his life for you all. Without a moment's fall. I oh, had one like that once. Trust him with my life. Oh, oh of course, they are liars. I've never known a native to tell the truth. Oh, does it get rather close around here? It's mild for the time of the year. Oh, but the rains may still come. They are late this year, aren't they? They are keeping uh, African time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's the humidity that gets me. It used to be whiskey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what's your handicap, old chap? Oh, is that racing by golly? Oh, splendid golf course. You'll like oh, it. Oh, I'm beginning to like it all. Ready. And a European club exclusive. Oh, you've kept the flag flying. We do our best for the old country. It's a pleasure to serve. Hey, another whiskey, old chap. You are too, too kind. Not at all, sir. Let's see, where is that boy? Mm. <laughs> sir, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Off with his knicker. Hey, 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 the first hey. woman we touch the door. Then tell him to leave this market. Uh, this is the home of our mothers. We don't know what the eater of white leftovers at the feast. Their hands are prepared. Uh, you heard them, Amusa. You had better go. Now! Oh, we dare go now. Oh. But make you no know, say we know one you. Now! Oh. Before we read you the riot acts, you should know all about that. Yes. Go! Go! Make we go. Uh, hey. Your goal. Do they teach you all that at school? Mm. And to take an helicopter quicker from the plane? Uh, did you 
you hear them, <laughs> did you see how they mimic the white man? Hey. The voice is exactly, <laughs> hey, there are wonders in this world. Well, our elders have said it. Mm. Dada may be weak, mm. but he has a younger sibling who is truly fearless. Uh -huh. The next time the white man shows his face in this market, uh -huh. I will set Wura Ola on his tail. Kai Alameja! Kai Alameja! It is no mere virgin stain, but the union of life and the seeds of passage. My vital flow, the last from this flesh, is intermingled with the promise of future life. All is prepared. Egbo. Yes, it is nearly time. The king's dog has been killed. The king's favorite horse is about to follow his master. My brother chiefs know their task and perform it well. Our marriage is not yet wholly fulfilled. When earth and passage wed, the consummation is complete only when there are grains of earth on the eyelids of passage. Stay by me till then. My faithful drummers, do me your last service. This is where I have chosen to do my leave taking. In this hut of life, this hive which contains the swarm of the world in its small compass. This is where I have known love and laughter away from the palace. Even the richest food cloys when eaten days on end. In the market, nothing ever cloys. Egbo. Gone to seek out the heart of the king's favorite horse. Soon it will ride on its bolt of raffia with the dog at its feet. Together they will ride on the shoulders of the king's grooms through the pulse centers of the town. They know it is here I shall await them. I have told them. promises well. Just then, I felt my spirit's eagerness. The kite makes for wide spaces, and the wind creeps up behind his tail. Can the kite say less than, thank you, the quicker the better? But wait a while, my spirit. Wait. Wait for the coming of the courier of the king. Do you know, friends, the horse is born to this one destiny, to bear the burden that is man upon its back, except for this night, 
This night alone, when the spotless stallion will ride in triumph on the back of man. In the time of my father, I witnessed a strange sight. Perhaps tonight also I shall see it for the last time. If they arrive before the drums beat for me, I shall tell him, let the Alafi know I follow swiftly. If they come after the drums have sounded, why then all is well, for I have gone ahead. Our spirits shall fall in step along the great passage. The moon has fed. A glow from its full stomach fills the sky and air. But I cannot tell where is that gateway through which I must pass. My faithful friends, let our feet touch together this last time. Lead me into the other market with sounds that cover my skin with down, yet make my limbs strike earth like a thoroughbred. Dear mothers, let me dance into the passage even as I've lived beneath your roofs. Can you hear my voice? Faintly, my friend, faintly. Can you hear my call? Faintly, my king, faintly. Is your memory sound, Eleshi? Shall my voice be a blade of grass and tickle the armpit of the past? My memory needs no prodding. But what do you wish to say to me? Only what has been spoken. Only what concerns the dying wish of the father of all. It is buried like seed yam in my mind. This is the season of quick rains. The harvest is this moment due for gathering. If you cannot come, I said swear you'll tell my favorite horse. I shall ride on through the gates alone. Elashin's message will be read only when his loyal heart no longer beats. If you cannot come, Elashin, tell my dog. I cannot stay the keeper too long at the gate. A, a dog does not outrun the hand that feeds it meat. A, a horse that throws his rider slows down to a stop. Elashin and Lafi trust no beast with messages between a king and his companion. If you get lost, my dog will track the hidden path to me. The seven-way crossroads confuses only the stranger. The horseman of the king was born in the recesses of the house. I know the wickedness of men. If there is weight on the loose end of your sash, such weight as no mere man can shift, if your sash is earthed by evil minds who mean to part us at the last. My sash is of the deep purple alari. It is no tethering rope. The elephant trails no tethering rope. That king is not yet crowned. Who will peg an elephant? Not even you, my friend and king. And yet this fear will not depart from me. The darkness of this new abode is deep. Will your human eyes suffice? In a night 
which falls before our eyes, however deep, we do not miss our way. Shall I now not acknowledge I have stood where wonders met their end? The elephant deserves better than that we say, I have caught a glimpse of something. If we see the tamer of the forest, let us say plainly, we have seen an elephant. I have freed myself from earth, and now it is getting dark. Strange voices guide my feet. The river is never so high that the eyes of a fish are covered. The night is not so dark that the albino fails to find his way. A child returning homewards craves no leading by the hand. Gracefully does the mask regain his grove at the end of day. Gracefully, gracefully does the mask dance homeward at the end of day. Gracefully. Water is how the swimmer goes. It is the death of markets that kills the trader. And death of indecision takes the idol away. The trade of the cutlass blunts its edge. And the beautiful die a death of beauty. It takes an elishi to die the death of death. Only Eleshin can die the unknowable death of death. Gracefully, gracefully does the horseman regain the stables at the end of day. Gracefully. How shall I tell what my eyes have seen? The horseman gallops on before the courier. How shall I tell what my eyes have seen? He says, a dog may be confused by new sense of beings he never dreamt of. So he must precede the dog to heaven. He says, a horse may stumble on strange boulders and be lamed. So he races on before the horse to heaven. It is best, he says, to trust no messenger who may falter at the outer gate. Oh, how shall I tell what my ears have heard? <laughs> but do you hear me still, Elashi? Do you hear your faithful one? Elashi Alafi. I no longer sense your flesh. The drums are changing now, but you have gone far ahead of the wall. It is not yet noon in heaven. Let those who claim it is begin their own journey home. So why must you rush like an impatient bride? Why do you race to desert your Oloio? Does the deep voice of Gbedu cover you then? Like the passage of royal elephants. Those drums that brook no rivals. Have they blocked the passage to your ears that my voice passes into wind, a mere leaf floating in the night? Is your flesh lightened, Eleshi? Is that lump of earth I slid between your slippers to keep you longer, slowly sifting from your feet? Are the drums on the other side now tuning skin to skin with ours in Oshuba? Are there sounds there I cannot hear? Do footsteps surround you which pound the earth like Bedu roll like thunder around the dome of the world? Is the darkness gathering in your head, Eleshi? 
Is there now a streak of light at the end of the passage? A light I dare not look upon? <laughs> Does it reveal whose voices we often heard? Whose touches we often felt? Whose wisdoms come suddenly into the mind when the wisest have shaken their heads and murmured, it cannot be done? Unless she over, don't think I don't know why your lips are heavy. Why your limbs are as drowsy as palm oil in the cold of Hamatan. I would call you back, but when the elephant heads for the jungle, the tail is too small a handhold for the hunter that would pull him back. The sun that heads for the sea no longer heeds the prayers of the farmer. When the river begins to taste the salt of the ocean, we no longer know which deity to call on, the river god or Oloku. No arrow flies back to the string. A child does not return through the same passage that gave it birth. Leshioba, can you hear me at all? Your eyelids are glazed like a courtesan's. Is it that you see the dark groom and master of life? And will you see my father? Will you tell him that I stayed with you to the last? Will my voice ring in your ears a while? Will you remember Olowi, even if the music on the other side surpasses his mortal craft? But will they know you over there? Have they eyes to gauge your worth? Have they the heart to love you? Will they know what thoroughbred prances toward them in caparisons of honor? If they do not, Eleshi, if any there cuts your yam with a small knife or pours you wine in a small calabash, turn back and return to welcoming hands. If the world were not greater than the wishes of Oloio, I would not let you go! Uh. As you see, it says emergency on the outside. I took the liberty of opening it because His Highness was obviously enjoying the entertainment. I didn't want to interrupt unless really necessary. Yes, yes, of course, sir. Is it really as bad as it says? Hmm? What's it all about? Well, it's some strange custom they have, mm -hmm. sir. It seems because the king is dead, some important chief has to commit suicide. The king? Isn't it the same one who died nearly a month ago? Yes, sir. 
Haven't they buried him yet? Yes, but they, they take their time about these things. Uh, the the pre-burial ceremonies last nearly 30 days. It, but it seems tonight is the final night. But what has it got to do with the market women? Why are they rioting? We've waved that troublesome text, haven't we? Yes, we don't quite know that they are exactly rioting yet, sir. Uh, Sergeant Amusa is sometimes prone to exaggerations. Well, he sounds desperate enough. That comes out even in his rather quaint grammar. Where is the man, anyway? I asked my aide-de-camp to bring him here. They're probably looking in the wrong veranda. I'll fetch him myself, sir. No, no, you stay here. Let your wife go and look for them. Do you mind, my dear? Certainly not, Your Excellency. You should have kept me informed, Pilkings. You realize how disastrous it would have been if things had erupted while His Highness was here. I, I wasn't aware of the whole business until tonight, sir. Nose to the ground, Pilkings. Nose to the ground. If we all let these little things slip past us, where would the Empire be, eh? Mm. Tell me that. Where would we all be? Sleeping peacefully at home, I bet. <laughs> What did you say, Pilkings? It, it, it won't happen again, sir. Well, it mustn't, Pilkings. It mustn't. Where is that damned sergeant? I ought to get back to his highness as quickly as possible and offer him some plausible explanation for my rather abrupt conduct. Can you think of one, Pilkings? Uh, w w uh, you, you could tell him the truth, sir. I could? No. No, 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 that would never do, Pilkings. What, go and tell him there is a riot just two miles away from him? <laughs> no, this is supposed to be a secure colony of His Majesty's Pilkings. Yes, sir. Ah, there they are. No, these are not our native police. Are these the ringleaders of the riot? No, no, no sir, the, these are my police officers. Oh. Well, I beg your pardon, officers. You do look a little, uh, I say. Isn't there something missing in their uniform? I think they used to have some rather colorful sashes. Or if I remember rightly, I recommended them myself in my young days in the service. <laughs> yeah, a bit of color always appeals to the natives, yes? Yes, I remember putting that in my report. Yes. Well, 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 where are we? Make your report, man. Let's have no more superstitious nonsense from you, Musa, or I'll throw you in the guardroom for a month and feed you pork. What's that? What has pork to do with it? No, no, no. I, I, I was just warning him to be brief, sir. I'm sure you are most anxious to hear his report. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Yes, come on, man, speak up. Hey, didn't we give them some colorful fez hats with all those wavy things, yes? Pink tassels? Yes, sir, I, I think if he was permitted to give his report, we might find that he has lost his hat in the riot. Ah, yes. It, yes. I'd better tell His Highness that. Yes, lost his hat in the riot. Yes. <laughs> yes. He'll probably say, well, as long as he didn't lose his head. <laughs> yes. Don't forget to send me a report first thing in the morning, young Pilkings. No, sir. And whatever you do, don't let things get out of hand. Hmm? Keep a cool head and... Nose, Nose to, to the, the ground, ground Pilky. Yes, sir. Would you be needing me, sir? Uh, no, thanks, Bob. I, I think His Highness' need of you is, is greater than ours. We have a detachment of soldiers from the capital, sir. They accompanied His Highness up here. I doubt if it will come to that, but thanks, Bob. I'll bear it in mind. Could you send an orderly with my cloak? Very good, sir. Now, Sergeant, yes, sir. not again! I cannot against death to dead cult. These dress get power of death. All right, let's go. You are relieved of any further duty, Amusa. Report to me first thing in the morning. Shall I come, Simon? No, no, no. There's no need for that. If I can get back later, I will. Otherwise, get Bob to bring you home. Be careful, Simon. I mean, uh, be clever. Well, sure I will. <laughs> you two, come with me. 
midnight. I had no idea it was that late. But surely they don't count the hours the way we do. The moon or something. I am not so sure. Uh, good night, madame. Oh, Amosa. Poor Simon. Who is that? I didn't mean to startle you, madame. I am looking for the district officer. Wait a minute, don't I know you? Yes, you... Our alone day, the young man who... Mrs. Pilkings. How fortunate. I came here to look for your husband. Alone day. Let's look at you. What a fine young man you've become. Grand, but solemn. <laughs> Good God, when did you return? Simon never said a word. But you do look well, alone day, really. You are... Uh, well, you look quite well yourself, Mrs. Pilkings. From what little I can't see of you. Oh, this, yes, caused quite a stir, I assure you, and not all of it very pleasant, but you are not shocked, I hope. Why should I be? But don't you find it rather hot in there? Your skin must find it difficult to breathe. Well, it is rather hot, I must confess, but uh, it's all in a good cause. What cause, Mrs. Pilking? Oh, this, the ball, and his highness being here in person and all that. And that is the good cause for which you desecrate an ancestral mass. Oh, so you are shocked after all. How disappointing. No, I am not shocked, Mrs. Pilkings. You forget that I have now spent four years among your people. I discovered that you have no respect for what you do not understand. Oh, so you've returned with the chip on your shoulder. That's a pity, Yolunde. I am sorry. I take it then that you did not find your stay in England altogether edifying. I don't say that. I found your people quite admirable in many ways. Their conduct and courage in this war, for instance. Ah, uh, yes, the war. Here, of course, it's all rather remote. <laughs> From time to time, we have a blackout drill just to remind us there is a war on. And the occasional convoy passes through on its way somewhere on maneuvers. Of course, there is the occasional bit of excitement, like that ship that had to be blown up in the harbour. Here? Do you mean through enemy action? Oh, no. The war hasn't come that close. The captain did it himself. I don't quite understand it, really. Simon tried to explain. The ship had to be blown up because it had become dangerous to the other ships. Even to the city itself. Hundreds of the coastal population would have died. Maybe it was loaded with ammunition and had caught fire. Or some of those lethal gases they've been experimenting on. Something like that. The captain blew himself up with it, deliberately. Simon said someone had to remain on board to light the fuse. It must have been a very short fuse. I don't know that much about it, really. Just that there was no other way to save lives, no time to devise anything else. The captain took the decision and carried it out. Yes, I quite believe it. I met men like that in England. <laughs> Just look at me. Fancy welcoming you back with such morbid news. Stale, too, was at least six months ago. I don't find it morbid at all. I find it rather inspiring. It is an affirmative commentary on life. What is? That captain's self-sacrifice. Nonsense. Life should never be thrown deliberately away. And the innocent people around the harbor. Uh, how does one know? The whole thing was probably exaggerated anyway. That was a risk the captain couldn't take. But, please, Mrs. Pilkings, do you think you could find your husband for me? I have to talk to him. Simon. Uh, oh. Uh, Simon is, um, there was a little trouble in town he was sent for. But when did you arrive? Does Simon know you're here? I need your help, Mrs. Pilkings. I've always found you somewhat more understanding than your husband. Please. Find him for me. And when you do, you must help me talk to him. I'm afraid I don't quite follow you. Have you seen my husband already? I went to your house. Your houseboy told me you were here. He even told me how I would recognize you and Mr. Pilkin. Then you must know what my husband is trying to do for you. For me? For you, for your people. And to think he didn't even know you were coming back. But how do you happen to be here? Only this evening, we were talking about you. We thought you were still 4,000 miles away. I was sent a cable. 
cable. Who did? Simon? The business of your father didn't begin until tonight. A relation sent it weeks ago, and it said nothing about my father. All it said was, our king is dead. But I knew I had to return home at once so as to bury my father. I understood that. Thank God you don't have to go through that agony. Simon is going to stop it. That's why I want to see him. He's wasting his time. And since he has been so helpful to me, I don't want him to incur the enmity of our people, especially over nothing. You. You, Alunde. Mrs. Pilkings, I came home to bury my father. As soon as I heard the news, I booked my passage home. In fact, we were fortunate. We traveled in the same convoy as your prince, so we had excellent protection. But you don't think your father is also entitled to whatever protection is available to him? How can I make you understand? He has protection. No one can undertake what he does tonight without the deepest protection the mind can conceive. What can you offer him in place of his peace of mind? In place of the honor and veneration of his own people? What would you think of your prince if he had refused to accept the risk of losing his life on this voyage, this showing the flag tour of colonial possessions? Ah, oh, see. So it isn't just medicine you studied in England. It's another error into which your people fall. You believe that everything which appears to make sense was learned from you. Not so fast, Alunde. You have learned to argue. I can tell that, but I never said you made sense. However cleverly you try to put it, it's still a barbaric custom. It's even worse. It's feudal. A king dies and a chieftain must be buried along with him. How feudalistic can you get? On this... Even in the midst of a devastating war, look at that. What name would you give to that? Therapy. <laughs> British style. The preservation of sanity in the midst of chaos. Others would call it decadence. However, it doesn't really interest me. You white races know how to survive. I've seen proof of that. By all logical and natural laws, this war should end with all the white races wiping out one another, wiping out their so-called civilization for all time and reverting to a state of primitivism the like of which has so far only existed in your imagination when you thought of us. I thought all that at the beginning. Then I slowly realized that your greatest art is the art of survival. But at least have the humility to let others survive in their own way. Through ritual suicide? Is that worse than mass suicide? Mrs. Filkings, what do you call what those young men are sent to do by their generals in this war? Of course, you've also mastered the art of calling things by names which don't remotely describe them. You talk, you people, with your long-winded roundabout way of making conversation. Mrs. Filkings, whatever we do, we never suggest that a thing is the opposite of what it really is. In your newsreels, I heard defeats, thorough, murderous defeats described as strategic victories. No, wait. It wasn't just on your newsreels. Don't forget, I was attached to hospitals all the time. Hordes of your wounded passed through those wards. I spoke to them. I spent long hours by their bedsides while they spoke terrible truths of the realities of that war. I know now how history is made. But surely, in a war of this nature, for the morale of the nation, you must expect... That a disaster beyond human reckoning be spoken of as a triumph? No. I mean, is there no mourning in the home of the bereaved that such blasphemy is permitted? Perhaps I can understand you now. The time we picked for you was not really one for seeing us at our best. Don't think it was just the war. Before that even started, I had plenty of time to study your people. I saw nothing, finally, that gave you the right to pass judgment on other peoples and their ways. Nothing at all. Was it the... Color thing? I know there is some discrimination. Don't make it so simple, Mrs. Pilkings. Make it sound as if when I left, I took nothing at all with me. Yes. And to tell you the truth, only this evening my husband and I agreed we never really knew what you left with. Neither did I. But I found out over there. I'm grateful to your country for that. And I will never give it up. Alunde, please promise me something. Whatever you do, don't throw away what you've started to do. You want to be a doctor. My husband and I believe you will make an excellent one. Sympathetic and competent. Whatever you do, don't throw away your training. Of course not. What a strange idea. 
I intend to return and complete my training once the burial of my father is over. Oh, please. Listen, come here. You can't hear anything against that music. What is it? The drums. Can you hear the change? Listen. There. It's all over. You mean he's... Yes, Mrs. Pilkings. My father is dead. His willpower has always been enormous. I know he is dead. How can you be so callous? So unfeeling? You announce your own father's death like a surgeon looking down on some strange... Stranger's body! You're just a savage like the rest of the- Mrs. Pilkins! <laughs> Mrs. Pilkins, are you all right, Mrs. Pilkins? She'll be all right. Who are you? And who the hell asked your opinion? You're quite right. Nobody. What the hell? Did you hear me ask who you were? I have business to attend to. I will give you business in a moment, you impudent nigger! Now answer my question! I have a funeral to arrange. Excuse me. I said stop! Orderly! No, no, don't stop! Don't do that! For heaven's sake! I'm all right! Don't act so foolishly! He's a family friend! Well, then he'd better learn to answer civil questions when he's asked them. These natives put a suit on and they get high opinions of themselves. Can I go now? No, please. I must talk to you. I'm sorry about what I said. It's nothing, Mrs. Pilkings. And I'm really anxious to go. I couldn't see my father before. It's forbidden for me, his heir and successor, to set eyes on him from the moment of the king's death. But now, I would like to touch his body while it is still warm. You will. I promise I shan't keep you. It's just... That... I couldn't possibly let you go like that. Bob, will you please excuse us? If you're sure. Of course I'm sure. Something happened to upset me just then, but I'm more right now. Really. I mustn't stay long. I promise not to keep you. It's just that... Oh, you see what... Yourself, what happens to one in this place? The residence man thought he was being helpful. That's the way we all react. And I can't go in among those people just now, and if I stay out here by myself, someone will come looking for me. Please, just stay and say a few things. Just Then you can go, just so I can recover myself. What do you want me to say? Your calm acceptance, for instance, can you explain that? It was so unnatural. I don't understand that at all. I feel the need to understand all I can. But you explained it yourself. My medical training, perhaps. I've seen death too often. And the soldiers returned from the front. They died on our hands all the time. No. I... It must be more than that. I feel it has to do with the many things we don't really grasp about your people. At least you can explain. All these things are part of it. And anyway, my father has been dead in my mind for nearly a month, ever since I learned of the king's death. I've lived with my bereavement so long now that I cannot think if I'm alive. On that journey, on the boat, I kept my mind on my duties as the one who must perform the rites over his body. I went through it all again and again, as he himself had taught me. I didn't want to do anything wrong, something which might jeopardize the welfare of my people. He had disowned you. When you left, he swore publicly that you were no longer his son. I told you, he was a man of tremendous will. Sometimes that's another way of saying stubborn. <laughs> but among our people, you don't disown a child just like that. Even if I had died before him, I would still be buried like his eldest son. But it's time for me to go. Thank you. I feel calmer. Please, don't let me keep you from your duties. Good night, Mrs. Pilkings. Welcome home. Keep them here till I get back. Thank goodness you're still here. Simon, what's uh, happened? Later, Jane, please. Is Bob still here? Yes, I think so. I'm sure he must be. Try and get him out here as quietly as you can. Tell him it's urgent. Yes, of course. Simon, uh, you... Yeah, yeah, yes, I can see who it is. Get Bob out here. 
At first, I thought I was seeing a ghost. <laughs> Mr. Pilkings, I appreciate what you tried to do. I want you to believe that. I can only tell you that it would have been a terrible calamity if you'd succeeded. You, you said what? A calamity for us, the entire people. I see. <clears throat> and now I must go. I must see him before he turns cold. This, this, this is a shock, seeing you again. I mean, thinking all this while you were in England and thanking God for that. I came on the mill boats. We traveled in the Prince's convoy. Ah, yes, well. <laughs> Good night. I can see you are shocked by the whole business, but you must know by now there are things you cannot understand or help. Just a minute, there are armed policemen that way. They have instructions to let no one pass. I suggest you wait a little. And wait, wait, yes, I I'll give you an escort. That's very kind of you, but do you think it can be quickly arranged? Well, of course. In, fa in fact, what I'll do is I'll send Bob over with some men to the uh, place, and you, you, you can go with them. Ha <laughs> ha! Here he comes now. And, um, excuse me a minute. Anything wrong, sir? Listen, Bob, that cellar in the disused annex of the residency, you know, where the slaves were kept before being taken down to the coast. Oh, yes. We use it to store the broken furniture. Yes, but it's still got the bars on it. Yes, they're very much intact. Get the keys, please. I'll explain later. I want a strong guard over the residency tonight. Well, we have that already. The detachment I, I, the I, I don't want them at the gates of the residency. I want you to deploy them at the bottom of the hill, a long way from the main hall, so they can deal with... Any situation long before the sound carries to the house. Yes, of course. I don't want His Highness alarmed. You think the riot will spread here? It's unlikely, but I don't want to take a chance. I, I made them believe I was going to lock the man up in my house, which is what I intended to do in the first place. They are probably assailing it by now. I took a roundabout route here, so I don't think there's any danger, at least not until dawn. No one is to leave the premises, of course. The native employees, I mean... Mm. They'll soon smell something is up and they can't keep their mouths shut. I'll give instructions at once. I'll take the prisoner down myself. Two police officers will stay with him throughout the night inside the cell. Right, sir! Jane! Bob is coming back with a detachment until he gets back. Please stay with Olunde. Please! If, I, 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 I hate to be stuffy, old son, but we have a crisis on our hands. It has to do with your father's affair, if you must know. It also happens at a time when we have His Highness here. I am in charge of security, so you'll simply have to do as I say. I hope that's understood. What's going on? All this can't be just because he failed to stop my father killing himself. I honestly don't know. Could it have sparked off a riot of some kind? No, if he'd succeeded, Dad would be more likely to start the riots. Perhaps there were other factors involved? Was there a chieftaincy dispute? None that I know of. Is it not enough that you have covered me in shame? Ah, white man, take your hand from my body. Let's go in. It's getting chilly out here. Carry him. Give me back the name you have taken away from me, you ghost from the land of the nameless. Carry him. I can't have a disturbance here. Quickly, stuff up his mouth. Oh, God. Let's go in, please, Alunde. Take your boot. That was my father's voice. Oh, you poor orphan. What have you come home to? Ugh. Are you bloody fools! After him! Leave him alone! Simon, tell them to leave him alone! All right, all right, stand aside, you. It may be just as well. It might help to calm him down. Olunde? Olunde? Oh, son. Don't let the sight of your father turn you blind. I have no father. He have left of us.
You seem fascinated by the moon. Yes, ghostly one. Your twin brother up there engages my thoughts. It is a beautiful night. Is that so? Yes, it is. The light on the leaves, the peace of the night. The night is not at peace, District Officer. No, I've, I would have said it was, you know. Quiet. And does quiet mean peace for you? Well, nearly the same thing. Naturally, there is a, a subtle difference. The night is not at peace, ghostly one. The world is not at peace. You have shattered the peace of the world forever. There is no sleep in the world tonight. It is still a good bargain if the world should lose one night's sleep as the price of saving a man's life. You did not save my life, District Officer. You destroyed now it. Now, come on! And not merely my life, but the lives of many. The end of the night's walk is not over. Neither this year nor the next will see it. If I wish you well, I would pray that you do not stay long enough on our land to see the disaster you have brought upon us. I did my duty as I saw fit. I have no regrets. No. The regrets of life always come later. You are waiting for dawn, white man. I hear you saying to yourself, only so many hours until dawn and then the danger is over. All I must do is keep him alive tonight. You don't quite understand it all, but you know that tonight is when what ought to be must be brought about. I shall ease your mind even more, ghostly one. It is not an entire night, but a moment of the night. And that moment is past. The moon was my messenger and guide. When it reached a certain gateway in the sky, it touched that moment for which my whole life has been spent in blessings. Even I do not know the gateway. I have stood here and scanned the sky for a glimpse of that door, but I cannot see it. Human eyes are useless for a search of this nature. But in the house of Oshibo, those who keep watch through the spirit recognize the moment. They sent word to me through the voice of our sacred drums to prepare myself. I heard them and shared all thoughts of earth. I began to follow the moon to the abode of gods. Servant of the white king, that was when you entered my chosen place of departure on feet of desecration. I'm sorry. But we all see our duty differently. I no longer blame you. You stole from me my firstborn, sent him to your country so you could turn him into something in your own image. <laughs> Did you plan it all beforehand? There are moments when it seems part of a larger plan. He who must follow my footsteps is taken from me, sent across the ocean. Then in my turn, I am stopped from fulfilling my destiny. Did you think it all out before? This plan to push our world from its course and sever the cord that links us all to the great origin? You don't really believe that. Anyway, if, if it was my intention with your son, I appear to have failed. You did not fail in the main thing, ghostly one. We know the roof covers the rafters, the cloth covers blemishes. Who would have known that the white skin covered our future? preventing us from seeing the death our enemies had prepared for us. Our world is set adrift, and its inhabitants are lost. Around them, there is nothing but emptiness. Your son does not take so gloomy a view. Are you dreaming now, white man? Were you not present at my reunion of shame? Did you not see when the world reversed itself and the father fell before his son asking forgiveness? That, that was in the heat of the moment. I, I spoke with him and... Well, if, if you want to know, he wishes he could cut out his tongue for uttering the words he did. No. What he said must never be unsaid. The contempt of my own son rescued something of my shame at your hands. You may have stopped me in my duty, but I know now that I did give birth to a son. 
Once I mistrusted him, forsaking the companionship of those my spirit knew as enemies of our race. <laughs> now I understand. One should seek to obtain the secrets of his enemies. He will avenge my shame, white one. His spirit will destroy you and yours. That kind of talk is hardly called for. If you don't want my consolation... No, white man, I do not want your consolation. As you wish. Your son, anyway, sends his consolation. He asks your forgiveness. When I asked him not to despise you, his reply was... I cannot judge him, and if I cannot judge him, I cannot despise him. He wishes to come to you to say goodbye and to receive your blessing. Goodbye? Is he returning to your land? Now, don't you think that's the most sensible thing for him to do? I, I advised him to leave at once, before dawn, and he agrees that is the right course of action. Yes, it is best. And even if I did not think so, I have lost the father's place of honor. My voice is broken. Your son honors you. If he didn't, he would not ask your blessing. No. Even a thoroughbred is not without pity for the turf he strikes with his hoof. When is he coming? As soon as the town is a little quieter, I advised it. Yes, white man. I'm sure you advised it. You advise all our lives, although on the authority of what gods I do not know. I... Before I leave you, may I ask just one thing of you? I'm listening. I wish to ask you to search the quiet of your heart and tell me. Do you not find great contradictions in the wisdom of your own race? Make yourself clear, white one. I have lived among you long enough to learn a saying or two. One came to my mind when I stepped into the market tonight and saw what was going on. You were surrounded by those who egged you on with song and praise. And I thought, are these not the same people who say, the elder grimly approaches heaven, and you ask him to bear your greetings yonder. Do you really think he makes that journey willingly? After that, I did not hesitate. Simon? Simon? What on earth? My young bride, did you hear the ghostly one? You sit and sob in your silent heart, but say nothing to all this. First, I blamed the white man. Then, I blamed my gods for deserting me. Now I feel I want to blame you for the mystery of the sapping of my will. But blame is a strange peace offering for a man to bring a world he has deeply wronged and to its innocent dwellers. Oh, little mother, I have taken countless women in my life, but you were more than a desire of the flesh. I needed you as the abyss across which my body must be drawn. I filled it with earth and dropped my seed in it at the moment of preparedness for my crossing. You were the final gift of the living to the emissary to the land of the ancestors. And perhaps your warmth and youth brought new insights of this world to me and turned my feet leaden on this side of the abyss. For I confess to you, daughter, my weakness came not merely from the abomination of the white man who came violently into my fading presence, there was also a weight of longing on my earth hell limbs. I would have shaken it off. Already my foot had begun to lift, then the white ghost entered and all was defiled. Oh, Simon, you will let her in, won't you? I, I don't really wish you'd stop interfering. Oh, good gracious, I didn't initiate this. I was sleeping quietly, or trying to anyway, when the servant brought it. 
It's not my fault if one can't sleep undisturbed, even in the residency. He'd have done the same thing if we were sleeping at home, so don't sidetrack the issue. He knows he can get round you. He wouldn't have sent you the petition in the first place. Be fair, Simon. After all, he has your own interests in mind. He is grateful to you, you know. You seem to forget that. He feels he owes you something. I just wish they would leave this man alone tonight, that's all. Trust him, Simon. He's pledged his word. It will all go peacefully. Yes, and that's the other thing. I, I don't like being threatened. Threatened? I didn't spot any threat. It's there, veiled, but it's there. The only way to prevent serious rioting tomorrow. What a cheek. I don't think he's threatening you, Simon. He's picked up the idiom all right. Wouldn't surprise me if he's been mixing with commies or anarchists over there. The phrasing sounds too good to be true. Damn it! If only the prince hadn't picked this time for his visit. Well, even so, Simon, what have you got to lose? You don't want a riot on your hands, not with the prince here. Now, let's see what he has to say. Chief Ellison, there is yet another person who wants to see you. She is not a next of kin. I don't feel obliged to let her in, but your son sent a note with her, so it, it, it's up to you. I know who that must be. So, she found your hiding place. <laughs> well, it was not difficult. My stench of shame is so strong, it requires no hunter's dog to follow it. If you don't want to see her, just say so, and I'll send her packing. Why should I not want to see her? Let her come. I have no more holes in my rag of shame. All is laid bare. I'll bring her in. Please, try and understand. Everything my husband did was for the best. You are the wife of the district officer? Yes, my name is Jane. That is my wife sitting down there. You notice how still and silent she sits? <laughs> My business is with your husband. Here she is. Now first I want your word of honor that you will try nothing foolish. Honor? White man, did you say you wanted my word of honor? I know you to be an honorable man. Give me your word of honor that you will receive nothing from her. But I'm sure you have searched her clothing as you would never dare touch your own mother. And there are these two lizards of yours who roll their eyes even when I scratch. And I shall be sitting over there watching even how you blink. Even so, I want your word that you will not let her pass anything to you. You have my honor already. It is locked up in that desk in which you will put away your report of this night's events. Even the honor of my people I... you have taken already. It is tied together with those papers of treachery which make you masters in this land. All right! I am trying to make things easy for you. If you must bring in politics, then we'll do it the hard way. Madam, you are to remain along this line and move no nearer to the cell door. Guards, if she moves beyond that point, Blow your whistle. Come on, Jane. How boldly the lizard struts before the pigeon when it was the eagle itself he promised us he would confront. I don't ask you to take pity on me, Eologia. You have a message for me or you would not have come. Even if it is the causes of the world, I shall listen. You made so bold with the servant of the white king who took your side against death. I must tell your brother chiefs when I return how bravely you waged war against him, especially with words. I more than deserve your scorn. I want you. If you must leave a seed behind, be sure it is not tainted with the causes of the world. Who are you to open a new life when you dare not open the door to a new existence? I said, who are you to make so bold? <laughs> hey, no, you self-vaunted stem of the plantain. How hollow it all proves. The pit is gone in the parent stem. So how will it prove with the new shoot, huh? How will it go with that earth that bears it? Who are you to bring this abomination on us? My powers deserted me. Oh. My charms. My spells, even my voice lacked strength when I made to summon the power that would lead me over the last measure of earth into the land of the fleshless. You saw it, Yalocha. 
You saw me struggle to retrieve my power from the, the, the power of the stranger whose shadow fell across the doorway and left me floundering and blundering in a maze I had never before encountered. My senses were numbed when the touch of coal iron came upon my wrists. I could do nothing to save myself. You have betrayed us! We fed you sweet meats, such as we hoped awaited you on the other side. But you said no. I must eat the world leftovers. We said you were the hunter who brought the quarry down. To you belong the vital portions of the game. No, you said, I am the hunter's dog, and I shall eat the entrails of the game and the feces of the hunter. We said you were the hunter returning home in triumph, a slain buffalo pressing down on his neck. You said, wait, I first must torn up this crooked hole with my toes. We said yours was the doorway at which we first spy the tapper when he comes down from the tree. Yours was the blessing of the twilight wine, the pearl that brings night spirits out of doors to steal their portion before the light of day. We said yours was the body of wine whose burden shakes the tapper like a sudden gust on his patch. You said no. I am content to lick the drags of each calabash when the drinkers are done. We said the dew on earth's surface was for you to wash your feet along the slopes of Vonna. You said no. I shall step in the vomit of cats and the droppings of mice. I shall fight them for the leftovers of the world. Enough, we called you enough. later. And oh, how you let us on. What we have no intention of eating should not be held to the nose. Enough, enough. My shame is heavy enough. Wait. I came with a body. You have more than discharged it. Oh. I wish I could pity you. I need neither your pity nor the pity of the world. I need understanding. Even I need to understand. You were present at my defeat. You were part of the beginnings. You brought about my renewal of the tie to earth. You helped in the binding of the cord. I gave you warning. The river, which fills up before our eyes, does not sweep us away in its flood. What were warnings beside the moist contact of living earth between my fingers? Huh? What were warnings beside the renewal of famished embers lodged eternally in the heart of man? But even that, even if it overwhelm one with a thousandfold temptations to linger a little while, a man could overcome it. It is when the alien hand pollutes the source of will, when a stranger force of violence shatters the mind's calm resolution, this is when a man is made to commit the awful treachery of relief. Mm. Commit in his thought the unspeakable blasphemy of seeing the hand of the gods in this alien rupture of his world. I know it was this thought that killed me, sapped my powers and turned me into an infant in the hands of unnameable strangers. I, I made to utter my spells anew, but my tongue merely rattled in my mouth. I, I fingered hidden charms and the contact was damp. There was no spark left to sever the life strings that should stretch from every fingertip. My will was squelched in the spittle of an alien race, and all because I'd committed this blasphemy of thought, that there might be the hand of the gods in a stranger's intervention. Hmm. Explain it how you will. I hope it brings you peace of mind. The bush rat fled his rightful cause, reached the market, and set up a lamentation. Please save me. Are these fitting words to hear from an ancestral mask? Huh? There's a wild beast at my heels. Is not becoming language from a hunter. May the world forgive me. I came with a burden, I said. It approaches the gates which are so well guarded by those jackals whose spittle will from this day on be your food and drink. But first, tell me, you who were once hella shioba. Tell me, you who know so well the cycle of the plantain. Is it the parent shoot which withers to give sap to the younger? Or does your wisdom see it running the other way? I don't see your meaning, your Did I ask you for a meaning? I asked a question. 
Whose trunk withers to give sap to the other? The parent shoot or the younger? The parent. Ah. So you do know that. There are sites in this world which say different, Elishin. There are some who choose to reverse this cycle of our being. Hey, you emptied back that the world once saluted for a pith-laden being. Shall I tell you what the gods have claimed of you? Huh? Hey! What is it? What is it? Let's Did they try alone. something? She stepped beyond the line. She meant no harm. Shia! Elashi! See what you have become! Once, you had no need to open your mouth in explanation because evil-smelling goats, itchy of hand and foot, had lost their senses. And it was a brave man indeed who dare lay hands on you because he alodja stepped from one side of the earth onto another. Now, look at the spectacle of your life. I grieve for you. I think you'd better leave. I doubt you've done him much good by coming here. I shall make sure you are not allowed to see him again in any case. We will be moving him to a different place before dawn. Oh. So don't bother to come back. We foresaw that. Hence the burden I trudged here to lay beside your gates. What was that you said? Didn't our son explain? Ask that one. He knows what it is. At least we hope the man we once knew as Alessine remembers the lesser oath he need not break. Do you know what she's talking about? Go to the gates, ghostly one. Whatever you find there, bring it to me. Not yet. It drags behind me on the slow, weary feet of women. But slow as it is, Alessine, it has long overtaken you. It rides ahead of your laggard will. What, 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 what is she saying now? Christ, must your people forever speak in riddles? It will come, white man, it will come. Tell your men at the gates to let it through. I'll have to see what it is. You will. But this is one oath he cannot check. White one, you have a king here, a visitor from your land. We know of his presence here. Tell me, were he to die, would you leave his spirit roaming restlessly on the surface of earth? Would you bury him here among those you consider less than human? In your land, have you no ceremonies of the dead? Yes. But we don't make our chiefs commit suicide to keep him company. Child, I have not come to help your understanding. This is the man whose weakened understanding holds us in bondage to you. But ask him if you wish. He knows the meaning of a king's passage. He was not born yesterday. He knows the peril to the race when our dead father, who goes as intermediary, waits and waits and knows he is betrayed. He knows when the narrow gate was opened, and he knows it will not stay for laggards who drag their feet in dung and vomit, whose lips are reeking of leftovers of lesser men. He knows he has condemned our king to wander the void of evil with beings who are enemies of life. Yes, but look here. What we ask is little enough. Let him release our king so he can ride on homewards alone. The messenger is on his way on the backs of women. Let him send word through the hat that is folded up within the bolts. It is the least of all his oaths. It is the easiest fulfilled. Bob. Sir, there's a group of women chanting up the hill. If you, you people want trouble... Simon, I think that's what Alunde referred to in his letter. No, knows damn well I can't have a crowd here. Damn it, I explained the delicacy of my position to him. I, I, I think it's about time we got him out of town. Bob, send a car and two or three soldiers to bring him in. I think the sooner he takes his leave of his father and gets out, the better. Save your labor, white one. If it is the father of your prisoner you want, Olunde, he who until this night we knew as Eleshin's son, he comes soon himself to take his leave. He has sent the women ahead, so let them in. <clears throat> what do we do about the invasion? We can still stop them, they're far from here. What do they look like? Well, they're not many, and they seem quite peaceful. No men. Mm, two or three at the most. Simon, I'd trust Talunde. I don't think he'd deceive you about their intentions. He'd better not. All right, Bob, bring them in. Warn them to control themselves, then hurry Alunde here. Make sure he brings his baggage with him, because I'm not returning him into town. Very good, sir. I hope you understand that if anything goes wrong, it will be on your head. My men have orders to shoot at the first sign of trouble. 
To prevent one death, you will actually make other deaths. Ah, great is the wisdom of the white race. But have no fear. Your prince will sleep peacefully. And so, at long last, will ours. We will disturb you no further, servant of the white king. Just let Elishim fulfill his oath, and we will retire home and pay homage to our king. I believe her, Simon, don't you? Maybe. Have no fear, ghostly one. I have a message to send my king, and then you have nothing more to fear. Olunde would have done it. The chiefs asked him to speak the words, but he said no. Not all you lived. Even from the depths to which my spirit has sunk, I find some joy that this little has been left to me. What is that? Hmm. The burden you have made, white one. But we bring it in peace. I said, what is it? White man, you must let me out. I have a duty to perform. I most certainly will not. There lies the courier of my king. Let me out that I may perform what is demanded of me. You'll do what you need to do from inside that cell or not at all. I've gone as far as I intend to with this business. Uh, uh, the worshipper who lights a candle in your church to bear a message to his god bows his head and speaks in a whisper to the flame. Have I not seen it, ghostly one? His voice does not ring out to the world. Mine words are uh, for nobody's ears. They're not words even for the bearers of this load. They are words I must speak secretly, even as my father had whispered them in my ears and I in the ears of my firstborn. I cannot shout them to the wind and the open night sky. Simon! Don't interfere, please. They have slain the favorite horse of the king and slain his dog. They have borne them from post to post center of the land, receiving prayers for their king. But the rider has chosen to stay behind. Is it too much to ask that he speak hat to hat of the waiting courier? Oh, so be it. Elas you see how even the mere leavings are denied you. Oh. Elas I call you by that name only this last time. Remember when I said, if you cannot come, tell my horse. What? I cannot hear you. I said, if you cannot come, whisper in the ears of my horse. Is your tongue severed from the roots, Eleshi? I can hear no response. I said, if there are boulders you cannot climb, mount my horse's back, this spotless black stallion. He'll bring you over them. Eleshi Oba. Once you had a tongue that darted like a drummer's stick. I said, if you get lost, my dog will track the path to me. My memory fails me, but I believe you said, my feet have found the path, Alave. I said at the last, if evil hands hold you back, just tell my horse there is weight on the hem of your smock. I dare not wait too long. There lies the swiftest ever messenger of a king. So set me free with the errand of your heart. There lie the head and heart of the favorite of the gods. Whisper in his ears. Oh, my companion, if you had followed when you should, we would not say that the dog has preceded his master. If you had followed when it was time, we would not say that the horse has raced beyond and left his rider behind. If you had raised your will to cut the thread of life at the summons of the drums, we would not say your mere shadow fell across the gateway and took his owner's place at the banquet. But the hunter laden with a slain buffalo stayed to root in the cricket's hole with his toes. What now is left? If there is a death of bats, 
the pigeon must serve us for the offering. Speak the words over your shadow, which must now serve in your place. I cannot approach. Take off the cloth. I shall speak my message from heart to heart of silence. Your courier, Elesi, cast your eyes on the favored companion of the king. <laughs> there lies the honor of your household and of our race. Because he could not bear to let honor fly out of doors, he stopped it with his life. <laughs> the son has proved the father, Elesi. <laughs> and there is nothing left in your mouth to nosh but infant gums. <laughs> Eleshioba, we placed the reins of the world in your hands. Yet you watched it plunge over the bitter precipice. You sat with folded arms while evil strangers tilted the world from its course and smashed it beyond the edge of emptiness. You muttered, there is little that one man can do. You left us floundering in a blind future. What the end will be, we are not gods to tell. But this young shoot has poured his sap into the parent's stock. And we know.